We are occupying the bodies of Earth people. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And as always, thanks loads to the subscribers that subscribe to the channel. This is my first wrap-up video of what I've got so far for the New World's November event. So as a co-host, I've had a great time discussing what could be read for these prompts with the other co-hosts. And it's been a really interesting experience so far anyway. And I have so far read eight stories. So that's six short stories, a novella and a novel. That's what I've got so far. And the prompt has been for terrestrial science fiction. So science fiction set on Earth. And it's quite a variety of stuff that I've covered. Different authors, different periods as well. So I'll go over what I've read and tell you what I think of it. And if you guys can tell me what you thought of some of those authors or maybe you read the stories or what I've said about it. It might be intrigued you, possibly, I don't know. So first thing I read... It was actually an audio version of a story, so technically I didn't read it, it was read to me, um, but it was a short story by Robert Silverberg. So I was looking for a Robert Silverberg interview on YouTube, because I was getting really into him and I wanted to see if there was interview footage of him. And while I was looking, I found Passengers, which is a 1969-1970 slash short story, uh, and it's really interesting, I think. I thought it was really good. I'll tell you what it's about in a second. And it's got a little bit of controversy around it as well. So it won the Nebula Award for short story that year, in 1969. And it was nominated for the Hugo Award for short story as well. So it's properly revered. And I think a lot of what Robert Silverberg does is very respected. But this is a story that's got um, a reputation. And basically it's about... It's called Passengers because it's about these aliens that literally ride humans and they possess them and they control them without these humans' consent. And the main character has this developing friendship, relationship with this woman and that's kind of in the background while you've got this um, alien possession plot being explored in the story. It's not a very long story, but... It's really interesting the way that you get this real sense of paranoia, helplessness, powerlessness. And it's quite creepy how it talks about the aliens possessing the humans. And I think it's really effective. I thought it was really good. And there's a very controversial ending. I personally think, I'm going to try not to spoil the ending here. I recommend you read the story. I personally think the ending is about Robert Silverberg pushing the idea of the helplessness and the powerlessness and the fact that the aliens could make the humans do anything without their consent. I think it's about that. But it has been interpreted as a negative political statement. And uh, if you look up on Reddit and stuff like that, then there's lots of people discussing it and some people will say one thing, some people say the other. But I personally think it wasn't deliberate as far as that political message. But I don't know for sure, and it, that's you know, it'd be interesting to see if there is any footage or anything of Robert Silverberg addressing that issue because he would have seen it being discussed, I think, because it's it's been an issue in the, in the reputation of the story for quite a while. But yeah, have a read of it, see what you think. But I personally think it wasn't a political statement. Um, that's the, the impression I get anyway, and is a really good story. So that's from nineteen seventy. Um, or 1969 possibly and I thought it was really good so then I started looking at the physical books and then I read Harry Harrison's Homeworld Harry Harrison um, has a very uh, sort of big place in my heart because he was one of the authors I got really into when I was a teenager and I've read loads of his stuff and I've got loads of his stuff but I hadn't got to this yet so this is the part one of a trilogy actually called To the Stars Trilogy, this home world, and then this wheel world, and then it might be Sky World, the third one, I'm not absolutely sure. I've got the first two, and I'll get the third one probably, because I really enjoyed this. This is really good. It sets up a rich, elitist businessman who is 
very happy, he thinks society is very cool, but very quickly the reader finds out and he finds out or at least realises that this world is a dystopia, that there is a huge gap in power, wealth and privilege in this world and he is part of the uh, problem and he gets this kind of class consciousness, if you like, through the story and it's about how he deals with that and I think the next book kind of carries on with the plot and takes it somewhere else because uh, because of the ending and kind of develops the dystopia even more I think from what I gather but I really enjoyed this I like the way Harry Harrison writes you could argue that um, the characterization of the gender differences could be a little bit dated you could argue it's a little bit dated so there's a few stereotyping going on but I think it's not I'll say this again with the other Harry Harrison um, book it's not I don't think it's that extreme so I think you can uh, just enjoy it but if you're sensitive to that kind of thing you might think it's a bit dated that was Homeworld I enjoyed that and then I read a story from 1968 called There Was an Old Woman that's from the book Needle in a Time Stack. So I bought this because I wanted to see if Needle in a Time Stack was something I wanted to include in my um, second time travel video, which I did. I really, really liked Needle in a Time Stack. So I thought I'd grab another story from this collection. And that was a story called There Was an Old Woman. So as I said, it's from 1968. And it's about this female biologist who decides that she wants to create 31 identical twins from her own um, eggs and uh, basically she grooms them to be 31 different careers, different lifestyles, different, different people in a, uh, in a lifestyle career kind of way. So 31 very different people and basically as that's explored, as the story goes on, as they grow up, they realise they don't want to live those lives that she was grooming them to be and then it ends very dramatically um, because they're not very happy. Uh, and, yeah, it's it was a good story. I really enjoyed it. It's kind of odd in a way because there's no explanation about why she wants to make these 31 different versions of um, her son. And I don't know if the general plot... Sorry, the general message is about nurture being more important than nature. I don't know. But ultimately, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was a good story. And I like the way he writes. I do really like the way he writes. And, and I'm sure I'm going to keep liking Robert Silverberg's stuff. So that was the second Silverberg story in this run of stories. So then I read the 2015 novella Binti. I've done a video on this already, so I won't talk in too much detail. But I would absolutely recommend you read this. It blew me away. I thought it was fantastic. It was a really... I like the way she writes anyway, Lady Okorafor. And I like the focus of the story. I was really intrigued to see what was going to happen next. A, a female, young... I think she's 16, I think from what I remember. 16-year-old from the Himba tribe. Uh, defies tradition and her family expectations. And she wants to go to university on this planet. And she sees and she meets these aliens and uh, conflict ensues. And it's really it's really good. Really, really good. There's some great ideas in it. And I just really like the way the way it's written. So Nelly Okora for Binti. Have a look at my video I've done, especially on the book, uh, because it gives you more detail about why I liked it and what you would expect to find in the story. And then I followed that with an Alfred Bester story. So the Alfred Bester story is from 1963 and that's called uh, They Don't Make Life Like They Used To, which is a great title. And the sort of title you come up with a lot with um, some some really cool science fiction stories. Sometimes you get some great titles. They don't make life like they used to. And this kind of was reminiscent, I thought, of some of the Twilight Zone stories like the episode called Two, which Elizabeth Montgomery and Charles Bronson was in, which is kind of like an Adam and Eve kind of trope which you do find sometimes in science fiction short stories. This one was slightly different because the, the, the story starts with the female character very 
excitedly and passionately exploring the world and her own preoccupations and she, it takes a couple of pages before she meets the other character in the story and then there's this sort of tension between the two of them what they want and they kind of develop this sort of grudging relationship and it kind of develops from there and I think it was really good I really enjoyed it I love the energy in it I love the way that Alfred Bester just writes anyway and the dialogue was really cool I would say you might find the stereotyping of the genders a little bit dated again Again, I'd say only a little bit dated. I mean, their preoccupations are very much how those genders might have been defined before. But I still really enjoyed it. Um, I, I wasn't bothered by that at all. But again, if it's the sort of thing that might piss you off, then uh, you might find that with that story. But they don't make, make life like they used to. I really enjoyed it. Alfred Bester. And everything I've read by Alfred Bester, I really like. And then I read a James Chitry Jr. story. So, I bought this knowing that I hadn't, um, I hadn't read anything by her yet. So, I don't know if you know, but James Citry Jr. is a pseudonym for a female author, uh, writing at a time when if you gave yourself a male name, you might get better recognition and that kind of thing. And I read a story called The Last Flight of Dr. Ain. So, The Last Flight of Dr. Ain is from 1975. And... It's, it's, it's like all, all of our stories in this collection. It's revered. It's, it's very, it's got a fantastic reputation and she's got a re great reputation. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it was written. I thought it was um, quite messy and I didn't like how, it seemed very really unfocused and a bit random and it just didn't connect with me. I like the idea in it. It's, it's all about... Um, a doctor and his preoccupation with a an infection kind of play kind of thing, but um, yeah, I didn't, I just didn't like the way it was written. So that was a bit of a misfire for me. But I'm going to read the rest of the stories in this collection. Hopefully, um, they will go down better. But I don't know what you guys think of James Citrus Jr. I know that this is one of the most iconic authors, so I was a bit shocked. But I'll read the rest of the book. Hopefully, I'll like that. And then I read a story by Theodore Sturgeon. Theodore Sturgeon, I keep loving his stuff. And I really do like how he writes. I think there's a real energy to it. And I don't know if this is going to make sense. But there's a real um, sense of almost like a mischievous grin in the prose style and what he's writing. Which is a really strange thing to say. But that's the best way that I can describe the way that his prose affects me when I'm reading it. It just seems like there's this sort of um, excitability behind it. I'm not sure. But I really like the way Theodore Sturgeon writes. And this was a story called And Now the News, which was from 1956. It's a really odd story. It's about a man who's obsessed with the news. And he gets, he gets basically, he goes, uh, you could argue he kind of goes a bit mad and he go he moves out after being completely engulfed in the news and listening to the news all the time on the radio and he and then a psychiatrist goes to look for him because his wife sends off a psychiatrist to look for him and the psychiatrist has this really bizarre encounter with him when he finds him and and it, and then it ends really weirdly <laughs> it's a very strange story but i really enjoyed it and you just get a sense that you don't know where these stories are going to go and there's something about Theodore Sturgeon that kind of sets him apart, I think. So, and now the news, I really enjoyed. So that was a, um, the last one in the first prompt. And then I started the second prompt. So I'm, in, I'm halfway through my first book with that, and it's another Harry Harrison one. It's actually a reread as well, and that's Death World 1. I love this cover. Um, this is a book I've had for years and years and years and years and years, and I read it when I was a teenager, and I wanted to read it again because I couldn't remember anything about it. And I'm really enjoying it. I'll say more about it when I do the wrap-up for the second prompt and maybe a bit of the third prompt. But uh, it's, it's ultimately about a man who discovers that there's another world full of these sort of super strong people and conditions on the planet that create big monsters and stuff. And he's trying to figure out um, what is the secret of this planet. And I'm only halfway through, so I haven't finished it yet. And I genuinely can't remember what happens. But I'm really enjoying it. I like the way Harry Harrison writes. And I like the way 
um, the characters are defined. But again, you might think that the stereotyping of the gender roles is a little bit dated, possibly. So, Death World 1. Um, I haven't finished that yet, but I'm about to finish it. So that's my first wrap-up for New World's November. If you're doing it, let me know what you're reading. If you know any of these authors, if I've offended you by saying I didn't like that James Citra Jr. story, let me know. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.